All right, folks. This is episode one, and I'm not going to contain myself in this episode thing. But this is the first video. Yeah. We're doing roots in Eden. We're doing a farming company, and I want to do videos of building awareness of people who are doing farming. Everything to do with this farming thing in cinnamon and grenadines. So when I decided to start off, I had to come and sit down with Hans. I had to come on the farm and sit down with him and have a conversation about farming in St. Vincent. So I want you to first introduce yourself to the people and tell them a little about you, Hans. Well, Maurice, thanks for having me. Roots in Eden. Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to this. I was so excited when you told me about it and I'm happy. I'm honored to be the first person being featured on this platform, you know, and I know that this this project that you're doing roots in in, in, in in Eden will be a successful one based on the discussion we had. As you mentioned earlier, my name is Hans John, yours mm -hmm. truly. I'm a singer, songwriter, cultural ambassador, an auditor, um, a community activist, um, a father, a brother, and yes, I'm a farmer. I love those pauses right Football here. as well too. Football. We we'll we'll met you football. We we'll met you football. Yeah. Because it's kind of good still. <laughs> it's kind of maybe I terrible. I used to go football for try to do some weight. He was actually quite good. <laughs> but we, we, we want to see you on the farming. All of these things, cultural ambassador, soccer artist, you will never put farming on that resume. Why? Is that is that is that culture thing in St. Vincent? Yeah, because of you know the, the, the traditional careers where you know society of the perception that you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, Come on. accountant or somebody to be successful. Right. You know? Um farming would have been seen or is being seen. Or still is being seen, seen. Still still being seen as a job or career for the poor. Thank you. Poor people are you know. Mm. are the ones who are doing farming because you can't find no other job because you're not qualified or have any subject to your name or any proper education or background mm. and your last resort is farming is farming so when when i when i so for, back back so let me tell you my story so we're going we're going to go we're going to go back and forth so about three years ago uh, me and my wife we were looking around for some lands Mm. And we found about 2.7 acres in, in Majaka. Really nice farmlands, really nice farmlands. So I had this idea to buy the land, farm the land, build a house on the land. We eventually went with a different piece of land that we, we eventually bought. But the idea of farming has stuck in my mind. Because I feel that the greatest robbery that has ever happened in, in our Caribbean islands we were brought here as slaves against our will. We walked for free on farms. Right. We come and own our own farm and then send our children to go and study to go back in a system where they don't have freedom. Facts. And that is a scary thing. In such a short generation, I'll jump. That we kind of jump back into slavery, but we just look better at it. We look we put on this nice suit and we go to to I don't understand why you see, well and I am happy that you, you went that route in terms of the, the discussion. Right? Our parents mm -hmm. they were part of farming. Right. Farming used to be the main revenue stream of revenue or stream of income. That were used to to keep the household together right. in terms of food bills and even sending us to school. Right. Our parents did farming to to survive, so it has a livelihood. But at the same time, they didn't want their kids to go through and I, what they went through in I, terms of farming. I, so one time you see. Like my dad, Westfield, mm. or Jericho, as they would say, mm. used to be a banana farmer. Right. And he would, every time they send you to school, they make sure you study your book. Right. Because some parents have the, 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 the perception or of the belief that they don't want their kids to struggle. Right. Like they did in order to make it in life. So um, I guess, I, I'm not even guessing. 
So you know. is the is the is the the whole the, the traditional beliefs of career and jobs are concerned. And I would have mentioned that earlier. Because our parents want to, to feel proud to know that they have a doctor in the family. Mm. You understand? To know that they have an accountant, to know that they have some form of, you know, entrepreneurial individual right, <laughs> or right. something happening in, in, in the home. So it, at the same time it's something about pride and the norms of society. And that is that is that is true. They, and I, I believe and I'm hoping that's why I do real estate. There's no reason for me to start a farming company. But I my wife, for example, her father farms. They have three children. None of them really jump into farming. One study IT, my wife psychology and management, my um, her brother studying bit to become a pastor. Nobody say let me do something agriculture. So that needs to change. There needs to be some re-education that happens that change our, pers our, our perspective. Because, hence, we're importing a whole heap of food. And a country that is supposed to be a green country, a country that has a mountain range coming down so we do have plenty of flatland to to develop. And not only if that, our soil is, you know, is very fertile because of the volcanic ash and so forth and you know the volcanic eruption mm. would have shown us that hey, agriculture is the way to go. Very much so. And we saw what happened, you know, during this pandemic when the pandemic hit in terms of food security. Right. You know, our imports right. dropped significantly where now you have persons planting stuff in the backyard where no persons are taking advantage of the, the ash, the ash fall, mm -hmm. because they know how fertile it is for, for crops and, and, and other um, produce. Right. So, so let, me, let, me, let me zero in here. Young people don't like farming. Is the perception of it a hard, it's hard work? It's for persons who are poor, poor who can't do better. Poor, hard work, can't do better. And I, as an IT person, Mm. So I am coming at farming from an IT's perspective. IT makes everything easier. Technology. And technology makes everything easier. And I believe that because the world is so small, because you have other, other places adding technology to farming and making it easier and more attractive, we need to sit down and do some serious research and say, this is not so hard as it used to be 20, 30 years ago. No, it, it is not hard at all, you know, because, you know, the world has become so small and it's in the palm of our hands. Exactly. Right? From a mobile device to an iPad, you name it. Mm -hmm. And this is where the educational system comes into play. For us to bring about that change, for us to change, you know, people's actions or people's mindset and people's whole overall attitude, I like to say attitude, mm -hmm. right, towards agriculture. We have to start from the, 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 the schools, right. the educational system, where we, 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 we introduce a curriculum or a syllabus that is geared towards learning mm. you know, about agriculture and modernized agriculture mm. and you know implementing the technology with agriculture. Um, I could tell you this. I went to St. Joseph Convent Morocco mm -hmm. and it is one of or only the only institution right now in St. Joseph and Grenadines that is doing agriculture double award. And if you know about double, um, double award agriculture, agriculture double award, it's two subjects in one, mm. right? And that used to be a big thing in my time. I know North Union would have been one of the leading um, schools who were doing agriculture at the time, double award agriculture. But since Joseph Convent Marker have been doing it for a number of years, and they are the only school right now in St. Vincent and Grenadines. If I'm not mistaken or wrong, right. that is still doing that. 
and you, 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 you're gaining two subject, two subjects okay. with a pass. This is where we need to start to introduce the, the simplest um, farming techniques in primary school where you teach um, where you teach um, farm or grade 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 from grade four to grade three students for their science projects right. integrated science in agriculture we do it how seeds germinate it is there already but we just need to bring it at the forefront because you remember those days when we had to do a project with the, the, the peas seed, or the, 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 the peas in, and a bottle, in a bottle with and water and right, paper and stuff right. like that it is there already mm. we just need to bring it on a larger scale and be more intensive with the knowledge that we're feeding our young people right. so that they will have a passion for it. Apart from that, the technical college is doing agriculture. It is there already. But I, I do think that we need an earlier introduction right. like from primary school come up. Because I think agriculture is something, globally speaking, mm -hmm. right? It is not a growing phenomenon anymore. Right. It is a phenomenon right. worldwide. And food security is a big thing. It's a big thing. And the world is getting more health conscious now since the pandemic. And this is something that we need to educate our young people on. And I can tell you this. Farming is not attractive anymore because one the the age of our farmers. The, the, the older farmers, our grandfathers, our fathers, our parents, they, you, they, you only have one set of people who are farming until they reach about 75, 80 and they're still going. You don't see young people in it. So it doesn't make it attractive because farming is associated with the age. Okay. Or when you get old, that's when you oh, you might do something. When you retire, mm -hmm. you try to keep yourself active still mm -hmm. from the, the whole stuff. And then, People don't see, people can't wait, young people uh, or people in general, some of us uh, don't have the patience to know that, yeah, boy, this crap had to take some time. The four months, crap is a nine five, month Yeah, crap. before we can gain some money and stuff right. like that. So you won't find persons coming into mm. this career field because they, they have the opinion that, oh, it takes a while before they could make money or they could work a fortnight and they could get you faster in terms of income. You don't get an instant turnover. Instant gratification. Yeah, you understand? But, but Hans, on those two, two, two points, you posting it on Instagram at over a thousand likes, that means something. Hans the soca star, massive soca star, I must say. <laughs> Planting, and, and we're going to talk about your, 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 your farm. But when I came across, I said, boy, that moved me, boy. I moved me that kind of way that it must be put out there as something attractive. You must have young faces putting these things on social media and glamorizing this so that we could change people's perception. Yeah, that's one of the problems. And I say this because, you know, we're, we're very traditional and nothing is wrong with tradition. Nothing is wrong with upholding tradition, norms and values or whatever we might want to call it. I think that has been one of the, the problems that some of the farmers have been facing over the years. My, my grandfather probably don't know how to use Instagram, how to snap exactly. and so forth. Marketing. Come on, come Marketing on. Marketing is one of the, 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 the big, you know, the big aspects Hans, that influence. Your Instagram <laughs> is a, is a, we call it a trading tongue. Yeah. So. You understand that? You see, you understand the concept there? Eh? So instead of me going and sit down on a Friday, the whole day, trying to get some people to buy from me. I put my stuff on Instagram, I put my stuff on social media and I, that's yeah. my trick. And, and that's, that's the, the perfect platform and it's for free all you need internet exactly and so we need a change of the young and the old need to come together yeah we need to bridge the gap in terms of our young people and you know the the, the older more seasoned farmers because they have a wealth of knowledge and we're more hands-on with the technology and we need to bridge the gap but because I can tell you this 
the, 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 the older seasoned farmers, when they pass on with all those knowledge, mm. who are they passing it on to? Exactly. It goes with them to the grave? And I see, I see it in real estate. I see people get into a certain age and start selling out the land because none of the children want to come and farm. No. And for me, I'm a kind of post. I believe in I believe in generational wealth. I believe in building the generation. Like my responsibility is not only to myself and my present children or child, but how am I influencing two, three generations down the road? What assets am I accumulating within my household that's gonna impact my generation? You see, but you see, we could sit down and discuss this here. Mm. And a few people might listen and say, yeah. Mm. Okay, all right, this is what's happening. But I think a big role in this has to do with policy makers as well. Right. And as much as we want to avoid it mm. or not be political, mm. we need to address it. Mm. Right? Where the policy is geared towards youth development. Mm. These are some of the focus that we should place emphasis on. Well, use the use culture in Barcelona, so you got for. Whereas, you go and I can tell you this: you know, <laughs> a lot of persons are, are going overseas to study, whether to be Taiwan mm. and Cuba and so forth and what's not, mm. right? They, they feel of study. Some are going to do, um, going to um, go, going to school to study to become lawyers and so forth. I feel that is already saturated. Right. I would definitely love to see policymakers, you know, distribute at least 20 scholarships geared towards agriculture to go and study veterinary, um, um, go to study food science mm. or agro-processing and so forth. Right. I know it is there. Mm. I know it is there. Mm. I think that would help from an educational perspective right. to drive persons because I could tell you beekeeping Mm. Apiculture. We probably have one or two certified persons who deals with bee handling, mm. apiculture. You understand? These are some of the fees that we could look to tap into, and it would benefit us not only in the now, but in the future. But in the future. Very and much. if we have a streamline of, you know, we have a streamline. We, we, we send in persons to go and study agro processing and, and apiculture and vet and so forth and we'll always have those careers related to agriculture flourishing and we'll always have those specialists that we might even outsource. Look at the, the, the nurses. Yeah. I would like to really model the nursing program with the agriculture program, program. for youths. Yeah. We have nurses, nurses. Mm -hmm. So many nurses until we're exporting. <laughs> they're, going, they're going to other countries to right. work. So that says a lot. Right. The, the, the wheel is there. Mm. I don't want us to reinvent the wheel. Because I will just fit the agriculture on that wheel. Fit the agriculture on that wheel. Because not everybody could be a lawyer. It is becoming a lot competitive. Those fields are somewhat saturated. Right. You understand? And we need to think outside of the box. Outside the box. All right, so I was a terrible host. I didn't ask you the name of your farm. We just jump into the conversation. <laughs> hot foot, hot foot, hot foot. So the name of the farm. And we, what, what is the purpose behind your name, man? Tell, tell me, where, where are you really farming? What are we doing? What are we doing? Well, Westfield Farm. Mm -hmm. The name was inspired by my father. Mm -hmm. His name was Mr. Westfield. So Westfield, so Theodore. West. <laughs> Theodore John. Right. And I'm actually named after him, him as well. Okay. And my, my name is Theodore as well too. So mm. he would have passed on October 6, 2010. And I decided to do something in the memory of him. Right. Uh, he used to be one of the, the biggest, one of the, the biggest banana farmers or prolific banana farmer here in the Marco Valley, so mm. I decided to do something, you know, that we could look back and remember his contribution to the community and to St. Vincent and to farming on a whole. Right. You know, so I decided to to name the farm after Westfield. Right. And how ironically, um, all these lands that you're seeing, mm. 
he used to be his okay. and he passed them on generational wealth you, you know, pass so it down given the start right. and his investment right i had to do something in memory of him right you know and he was very instrumental in you know in our education mm. in our lives you know in terms of personal decision and you know bringing us up in the right way along with my mom so we had to do something for jericho come on westfield farm all right <laughs> so we're planting we're planting vegetables mm. and we're into livestock as well um, we have goat sheep pig mm. and we're investing in some cattle as well okay you know but it's mostly vegetable for now until we decide to to move on apart from that mm-hmm. <laughs> we're into um, we have a distribution company okay. as well too my sister and i felisa john we're mm-hmm. exporting produce to up the islands like st kids and martinique where they might be planting coconut banana and so forth dashing and, and all these okay. other products. wonderful so that segues into our last bit of discussion. I believe that we have to find that is one of the goals for Roots in Eden. I do not want St. Vincent to keep sending out raw materials and importing what the processed finished product. I totally agree with you. So what are we doing about this hands? What are we going to do? Will you, how, how can I help you and you help me? fix and remedy this this I feel is a problem well exporting is not a, a, a it's, bad thing it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing because it contributes towards the, 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 the country's GDP right and we really need that right and I can tell you this for us to still be exporting mm. produce to other countries it says a lot about what that. we have to offer mm. locally, regionally, internationally mm. and still have sufficient here mm. if you, you get me? right, right um, for us to think an end product or finished product we first must be farming on a commercial level right the streamlined production very important right and we have to have a set up in terms of the infrastructure, a factory, a processing plant, you know, and for one individual to mm. single handedly take on such a huge investment, it will be very costly. Right. And I, I agree with you, and this is where how I look at things come in. I believe in it working. Collaboration. Collaboration. Collaboration, collaboration. So I do real estate. And then I, I started a second company, Shaytree, with five, five people. We come, come together to you know, buy land, build houses. Because I, I, I ain't born rich. You understand? Yeah, none of us. None of us. <laughs> Most people is in business. But we're rich in life, you know. Yeah. God bless us. God and bless us. But you have to look within your circle and say, how could Hans doing something? Can be doing something behind the camera? How could we come together to do something? Yeah, in order for us to come, you see, like for finished product, you know, mm. right? We could come together because, as I mentioned, no one individual would want to take on that that cost. Um, a group of us could approach the bank, the government could put these, you know, in infrastructure in place, just like what they did to, you know, with Winfresh, and they created the whole pepper sauce and, and so forth. Big up Kemp Stan Kato, eh? impressive mm. fans. Mm. You need to check him out as well. For you sure, know? for sure. Yeah, so it is there. But for us to single handedly take on such a, a huge investment, mm. you know, and we have to ask ourselves is the financial institution will be willing. Man, 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 Hans, I don't believe. I do think the problem is w- could be altered or fixed once we, we collaborate and we pull our resources together and we we make it happen. That is what I believe. Put your mind to it and I don't take no for an answer. There must be a way. Collaboration. Collaborate. We what? could even have a, a you know, I, I believe in I love to support locally owned companies. Right. You know, it really warms my heart when I see local investors mm-hmm. 
creating or establishing businesses on the windward side, the leeward side in the Marka Valley. I feel happy about that. I have no problem against um, foreign investors, mm -hmm. foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. It is good for the country as well too. But if we can create it for ourselves. And even the, the, the partnership of, you know, somebody go outside come and invest. But it's, we must figure out how we can move forward with our raw materials into making products. All right? And I believe that it is there already. It, you know. is, it is there. Planted chips. People do it. Food chips. But it needs to be like this wide scale. It is there already. Right? It mm. is not hard. Mm. Look at the, 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 the planting chips. One you, you go big up to Don chips and Maxine chips. Right. Yeah. Because those are the two I just look for. Right. And big up to Erica Pepper Sauce. Come and on. Peter. It is there. It is there already. So that, you know, and, 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 Glogia's, and Glogia's seasoning and all our projects. You know, the labeling and the packaging. Come on. Is above. Right. Clearly, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah, man. And I feel like we have to start a, a, a program to discuss these topics, bring on guests. So, this can be the start of a beautiful little relationship between you and I. Yeah, man. So, as I transition into my water boots, <laughs> you go show me the way. You go clear the way for me. Yeah, man, no problem, man. I'm, I'm definitely on board. And I'm saying this to those um, person who are viewing this program or this video you know come on board don't be afraid you know there's a lot of knowledge out there and i am willing to learn you can learn from me i can learn from you we can learn from each other Precisely. so let's team up collaboration unity is strength unity and is strength. let's sure. make this thing happen and hear what we can create history in st vincent and the grenadines i know we can create history but we can't do it by ourselves for sure we need your we need your support and we need you to be a part. So join the movement now. You understand? Hit up Mr. Property. Maurice Mr. Agriculture. Mr. Agriculture. What they say? What this one is? Is Mr. Agriculture? What this one? Is? Mr. Agriculture is not property anymore. Property is for the other. For the other. The, you understand? So okay. this is Farmer John signing out. No problem and respect. And Mr. Agriculture Culture. himself. Very much so. And we, we, we're going to. We we'll capture it under the, the revolution will be televised. Yeah, man. So everything we learn, we're going to try to put it in some kind of video, some way, so that somebody who is out there who have doubts or who have questions, they could get the question answered. They could reach out and say, I want to start this, but how do I go? So we want to be as, as transparent with the process as possible so that we could help the generation behind mm -hmm. of us and the current generation yeah man and once you start you know it is not hard you just need to start once you start trust me you will find the strength you will build momentum you will you know be motivated in so many different ways you know because i started out just the same so it's just start it's just a start just a you start. need man just a start all right so hans thank you for coming out of the program yeah man respect bless and love and he's a john i'm a john i feel he's a john kind of hype vibe <laughs> <laughs> hype, 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 are we out? Don't know. <laughs>